Good morning, everyone. Started a new program. I'm actually on week five, and I wanted to show you guys what that program looks like. It's a lot of fun. Thankfully, I'm not training here. In case you guys were wondering, yes, Breakmasters is open. Okay, so the program I'm doing is by Mike Bardos of MB Power Center. The program, I'll put it up on the screen, the image quality might suck. Uh, this is just a screenshot from my phone. You can go follow him on Instagram, at MB Power Center, and he has the program posted somewhere a few weeks back. I think he still has it on his website, so you can also check it out there. Any questions about the program, don't ask me. Go ask him on Instagram or email him or whatnot. It is his program, not mine. So I'm gonna do my best to explain how this program's laid out. What you're looking at here in this screenshot is the first block, block one. Within this block, there are three waves. Each wave is two weeks long. You will see on the left-hand side, four days. Those four days are spread out through two weeks. So day one and day two is on week one, day three and day four is on week two. And then repeat that. Day one, day two, week three, day three, day four, week four, and so on. And the way that's laid out is the first two days is a volume, high volume hypertrophy day. The third day is kind of a conditioning, uh, rate of force production, speed day. And the final day is an intensity day. So again, it's off of a two week rotation, volume, volume, conditioning, intensity. So Mike, the creator of this program, prescribed SSB squats, safety squat bar, with the, the safety squat bar backwards. So normally if I was facing this direction, those handles would point forward, making it easier to hold my shoulders. But because they're pointing backwards, there's this pressure pushing back, wanting to pitch you forward in the squat. So this is where the bar naturally, where it needs to sit, and it wants to push back like that. So you can see how difficult these squats are, wanting to send you forward and round your upper back. All right, squats are done. I would say that was extremely difficult. That was tough, hard work. But Mike says that's the way the program is supposed to be. You got wave one, wave two, wave three, increasing in intensity in a sense from wave to wave and by wave three it should be near maximum effort. You're either asking for spotters or you're making sure the safeties are set up in the right spot to catch you if you fail. I would say those were all nine or ten RPE. And as I was going through these squats I was thinking about how cool it was to be aware of these little waves of energy I was getting. So the first set I'm fired up, I'm ready to knock this first set out. For me, the first set and my working sets is usually the most daunting. Just get this one out of the way. By the second set, I got this extra wave of energy. Hey, let's get through this so I can get to the halfway point. After that, I'm on my third set. Let's finish this set, and then I'm on to my last set. And by the fourth set, I'm ready to get it done. 
So I kind of have these little waves of energy and I think that positive self-talk is very important in the gym. Okay, so moving on to the title of this video, the Ukrainian deadlift. I have done Nordic hamstring curls, glued ham raises, good mornings, Romanian deadlifts, leg curls, single leg leg curls. I've done all the hamstring exercises you can think of. And my hamstrings, I have never experienced the hamstring fatigue and hamstring soreness that I have after I did these Ukrainian deadlifts for the first time. I don't know how to define a Ukrainian deadlift, but it's essentially where you're standing on two raised platforms to create a large deficit. And you're doing, I guess, a sumo deadlift because your hands are inside of your legs, inside of your feet. And you're doing deadlifts with a loading pin. The range of motion is as low as you can get it. And in this program, it's a stiff leg Ukrainian deadlift, so I'm not bending my knees. I'm just trying to sit my butt back, but not down. And I'm trying to prevent any forward knee travel, no forward knee travel of my knees, I'm trying to keep my shins vertical. And because I'm doing them on this tire, my stance is a little bit wider than it would be for a normal deadlift, which I think is recruiting even more hamstrings than if I had a narrow stance. I don't know if that's true, but that's what it feels like. You wanna go down low enough to where you start to feel your lower hamstring stretch and your upper hamstring stretch. You'll feel a little bit of stretch in your lumbar spine. And then once you feel that stretch in your butthole, you know you've gone far enough, it's time to come back up. And the reason that I decided to do this program is because it, it's just different than anything I've done before and I wanted to give it a try. And it looks like a lot of fun and a good change of pace from what I was doing previously. Hey man, six feet. Six feet. Give me the camera. Wipe it down first. All right. So I'm on wave three. That was my day one. I'll show you guys what day two looks like uh, later on this week and then day three and four will come out next week. And uh, as far as the other couple of days that I'm training in the gym, my upper body days, not part of the program. This is a deadlift only program, but I'm doing the same layout or structure as this program. I'm just swapping out upper body movements. For example, instead of doing pause squats, I'll do pause bench press. I'm doing a lot of overhead press, high incline bench press, dumbbell bench press, and I'm following the same set and rep scheme as this deadlift program, but I'm just swapping out exercises for upper body exercises. You can get more information about this program, about MB Power Center equipment at mbpowercenter.com. Thanks for watching and always remember, try down time.